I got to NYU and I literally saw the visual manifestation of what I was thinking about, which was in that area of Tisch uh, on Broadway in the in the city, you see a lot of nannies. You know, it's literally like the United Nations of nannies, and they're mostly caring for white children. And so seeing that visual was the catalyst for me to start putting pen to paper. It's so lovely to be with you here today. I hope everything's been going well. Hi. It has. Yes. It has. <laughs> It's been busy, but it's going well. (laughs) Good, good. I'm glad to hear. Nikyatu, I know that you teach at Mason. I just want to say that I'm an alumni of that school. Oh, I was very excited to to chat with you today. (laughs) Listen, I hope that makes the cut because George Mason is going to be very happy about that. That shout out. (laughs) Professor Juice. Shout out to George Mason University. (laughs) Yes, excellent school. Um, And you incorporated spiritual elements that spoke to your own lineage for this film. Why was it so important to bring these elements to Nanny's story in particular? You know, I think that I've seen some really amazing, a handful of really amazing international films that explore domestic workers. Um, Brazil, uh, mostly South American films, actually, that explore the dynamic of domestic workers. And I hadn't seen many or any, I don't want to say that because there's always something in the canon Mm -hmm. um, that utilize horror as a a way into that world. And I never wanted to, filmmaking is so hard that I I want to make the types of films that I want to make. And I want to utilize my labor and other people's labor to make resonant films that create relatively new language in the canon. And so the parallel of domestic work with dramatic elements and culturally specific folklore felt like the right way in for me. Um, that was specific to my lineage. I really love the film. I actually saw it all the way back in Sundance. Oh, nice. Thank you. Yes. What has that journey been like? Because before then you you didn't have distribution and now you're kind of been on a lot of interviews, a lot of uh, film festivals and things like that. So what has that been like and what has that meant for you personally, for both of you? <laughs> well, it's, you know, the story is so personal to me and it meant a lot to me from the moment I read it throughout filming and then finally seeing it. Um, It's so deeply personal. It just means so much to me. So to see it celebrated, Mm -hmm. to see people relate to it in the same ways that I've related to it, um, it makes me feel more connected to people. Mm -hmm. And it gives me hope about humanity, really, to be honest. Um, and that's 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 how that's how I've been experiencing it. Mm. And we're still a little breathless because everything is happening really fast. Like you said, We were one of the few films in competition with no distribution. So other films were kind of like going into this a little laid back relatively in terms of not needing an award necessarily. Everyone wants to win an award, but the stakes were a little higher for us because we had yet to have a distributor. And um, I do think that the grand jury prize from Sundance and that 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 amazing jury acknowledging our labor Mm -hmm. and our craft and our the the resonance of our storytelling made a difference in in garnering uh, distribution. And Nikiata, this is your first feature debut, feature film debut. How did the idea come about, and what has the overall filmmaking process been like for you versus making a short film? The idea is is very loosely based on pieces of my mother's story. I'm first generation American uh, from a Sierra Leonean family, and my mother is highly ambitious and highly brilliant and has aspirations of her own. And yet a lot of the work that she ended up doing to support the household, I always felt like was beneath her, um, which is par for the course with a lot of immigrant women. And um, that was the springboard. I got to NYU and I literally saw the visual manifestation of what I was thinking about, which was in that area of Tisch uh, on Broadway in the in the city, you see a lot of nannies. You know, it's literally like the United Nations of nannies, and they're mostly caring for white children. And so, seeing that visual was the catalyst for me to start putting pen to paper. In terms of process, as an educator, you mentioned George Mason. As a teacher who teaches filmmaking, short films are my favorite thing to teach. Short fiction films because. It allows students to understand, aspiring filmmakers to understand that most films are built around a moment or a main, you know, clearly a main protagonist. 
who has a goal and faces obstacles in the achievement of that goal. That's the most basic distillation of a story in motion picture. And a feature is not just like stretching that out. A feature is so much more nuanced than that. Mm -hmm. But shorts are the pathway for a lot of us into our first feature. So although they're two different beasts, I think that short films are really important in um, honing the muscle of storytelling on the way to the feature film. Honor your performance as Aisha is incredible. How did you prep for this role? Thank you. Um, well, Aisha has has so many parallels um, to my own mother and to myself. Uh, my mother immigrated from Senegal to Houston when I was six years old, and she does it for the same reason as Aisha does, which was to build a better life for me. And because it was so personal, I, I've had only to meditate on a lot of um, the experiences that I witnessed her go through when she first came um, because she had to make do and she had to survive. And so she learned how to braid hair. She knew a little bit how to braid hair, but she got really good at it and then started braiding hair out of our home for about a year and a half, a couple of years. And then she just discovered um, caretaking work and nanny work. And then she went into that. So there's so many parallels between my mother and what Aisha's navigating and the ways that she navigates it. And so I thought a lot about that. And um, and I also found my own personal parallels to Aisha's loneliness and her mm. longing and her depression and, mm. and all of these elements as well. And well, it's an incredible film. That's all the time that I have. Thank, thank you so much, thank ladies, you. for taking the time. And best of luck on the rest of your press tour. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.